We are just about a week away from what Coach Rule and the rest of the program are referring to as 831. Minnesota. Going to be a tough, very fun game to watch. We've broken down some of the position rooms, and next we wanted to tackle the linebackers. Gary, obviously the star of the show is going to be Luke Reimer. This kid seems to have it all. I think he's going to go pro. Don't want to jinx him. What have you been hearing about his progress under Matt Rule? I mean, honestly, he's one of the main ones I haven't heard a ton about. Like, you, I, they talk about him, obviously, and how like the leadership role. And obviously we've all seen over the last few years, his talent level, they still maintain that, but it's it's a lot of the guys that we either haven't seen or heard in recent history, either at the position or getting much game time or, you know, snaps that I feel like we're hearing the most about. I think he's the biggest shoe in for absolutely day one starter. There's a lot of hype, obviously, especially after the spring game about like Sherman. And then obviously a lot of talk about Henrik coming back from his injury and how close to, or if he's at hundred percent yet and more talk about those types of things but I, I don't think it's because Reimer isn't performing or doing his thing I think it's just a an obvious like yeah that's the guy type of deal sticking with Reimer real quick it's his senior year do you think he's definitely going to go pro is he going to get drafted I would think he'd get drafted I don't know how early it'd be I know his size and some things like that especially when you compare for us he's been I would argue our best defensive player most consistent for sure but when you look at the pool of specifically middle linebackers that are going to be coming out I just don't know that any of the things that are his strengths are elite enough to compete with a lot of the other top guys he's going to be up there in tackles he always is he's got a good IQ understands his assignments and things like that so I think he will get drafted I just think it'd be later especially if he stays healthy and they have a good year from what we're hearing you know the defense is supposedly on track or ahead of schedule and if he's going to be like kind of the the nucleus of that defense his stock draft for sure could rise throughout the season to where he he moves up but i think once the combine and people are looking at tape and comparing him to other top prospects coming out as middle linebackers i don't know that he's high enough to be a second day type draft pick what, what do you think i would have thought for sure he'd get drafted but i wasn't aware of how deep of a draft class it was at his position if that makes sense you look at him he might look a little unassuming to some scouts they might look past him i think somebody's gonna get a steal though i I don't disagree now you mentioned henrik we have a little differing opinion yeah a, a big differing opinion i'm trying to soften my stance and agree that i shouldn't have been judging him while he was so injured and maybe he was just gutting things out but i was judging him when he was injured and so why don't you just sell us on henrik and why he's so great i don't know that i would say great i think he's consistent i think he's got a good enough iq understands his assignments i felt like last year was the first time before i knew that he was kind of battling through injuries and then he had the the bigger injury it just seemed like he was out of place often like kind of getting swallowed up in some of the the interior like the a b gap scenarios and not able to get back out once i heard about him being hurt or you know knew the severity of how injured he was it's like okay that makes sense it's your mind doesn't slow down because your body has you know what i mean so like where you can get into spots and back out and you know what you're capable of doing it, it kind of made more sense to me that yeah he's doing what he's always tried to do his body's just not working with him type of deal and i could be wrong but i never thought he looked bad the two years prior you know i thought he looked good and developed and kept getting better i thought him and reimer together were a really good combination you know in the linebacking core but if he's really 100 percent healthy packed on some size some strength things like that and his mind's in the right spot like i don't know that there's really a better scenario situation for this style of defense than to have those two guys who play together for quite a while together i'm not trying to downplay them or take shots at him but there's nothing to me that stands out of them like one thing like god he's fast or his tackling is insane or you know whatever he he sticks with tight ends and running backs they can't get open i don't i don't think either one of them have that but they're both like i said very consistent and they seem to like do really well understanding their assignments and not being out of position too often so if if you've got both of them healthy you know heinrich or henrik whatever especially kind of improved pack on a little size little muscle while he was going through all of his rehab and things like that i would I know some people, you're not the only one, man. I've heard a lot of people like, God, man, can't they get, you know, Sherman and Bullock or somebody in there instead of him? And I think a lot of that comes from how he played last year when he was banged up before he went out for the for the year. But I don't know, man. I think it's a good scenario and a good setup for the for this new style of defense to have those two as, as your two kind of anchors in the linebacking spot. Well, I am wiping the slate clean. I'm not going to be judgmental. I'm going to just 
treat him like a new player that I've never seen play before and hope for the best. MJ Sherman is intriguing. Two players, actually. MJ Sherman and Chief Borders. I'm not going to lie. The fact that they come from Georgia and Florida universities weighs into that. It's just exciting. MJ Sherman's got a prototypical NFL body as well. That's exciting. Either of those two do you think are going to make a huge impact? I think Sherman will. I don't say that because I like favor him. I just, the spring game is really all we have to go off of, right? And him and Prenswell were all over the place on the defensive side in that spring game. So, I mean, there's definitely a lot of hype and a lot of excitement around the entire fan base for him. I think mainly coming, like you said, the fact he's from Georgia and the fact that, you know, he did what he did during the spring game. Again, not to downplay things, but like, you know how I am with the transfers. If they're, just because they came from a big school, it's like, all right, well, if they're studs. Why aren't they still there? You know what I mean? Like, we're, we're not getting guys that were up for Lombardi trophies and Heismans and things like that leaving these big schools and coming. Most of them are upset about something, usually playing time or disagreements with coaches and things like that. So it's that doesn't do as much for me. But watching him, the way he's going to be able to kind of use his speed and his size as on the outside and things like that. I think this whole coaching staff, both sides of the ball, all the position coaches have made it very clear that their goal is to create mismatches, especially Tony White. He He's talked about putting essentially like you're the best guy or one of your better guys on their weakest point or you know attacking that way and with a guy again his size and you know his speed and the things that he looks like he's able to do putting him in scenarios is going to elevate everybody right you know when you're put in a better situation so i think he and henrik especially will benefit from that type of, of coaching that type of game planning yeah i'm starting to think that chief is going to have to wait a little bit more of his turn because he's younger and with mj sherman it would be great if he wasn't a senior so we could have him for longer but the fact that he is i think he's gonna play with a lot of urgency this being probably his last really good shot at proving that he deserves to be drafted into the nfl i don't know about chief like the weight in his turn thing i mean i think it just kind of the senior thing obviously i think carries some weight but where they talk about hockey style rotations almost you know or having trying to take snaps off of guys, especially early in the season, so that people are more durable and last longer. Injuries are at a minimum. Injuries are still gonna happen, obviously. And then as you're rotating, especially with that 3-3-5, three, three, teams you're playing are gonna dictate a little bit more your personnel and what you can do, at, especially the linebacker position, if you got power running teams and things like that. But I think he'll get a lot of snaps. I think Bullock and them will get a lot of snaps. I think guys that we probably won't talk much about in this video are gonna get decent looks. And I wouldn't be surprised if a guy or two pops up kind of out of nowhere, but I just think when you're talking about the more kind of sure bet starters in the vast majority of the snaps, I would say like he and Bullock are probably the main two guys that are going to be kind of right on that edge, like outside looking in, but some of the first ones in on the rotations, first ones up if somebody goes down either for a few snaps or series in a game or misses the chunk of games. And then obviously there's no way we can not talk about my guy, John Wick Bullock. This guy's making a name for himself. I don't know what it is. We're going to find out in just about a week. But this guy's getting a lot of air time, a lot of camera time. There's got to be something there. He's not going to start, but you were saying you think he's going to back up Reimer. Yeah, he seems to be kind of listed as a middle linebacker. This is like the third year in a row. It's really the second year, but kind of the third if you look at some of the other position coaches where I feel like there's a lot of maybe unnecessary hype around guys and positions just because we don't know and it's especially husker fans seem to be very optimistic about unknown things like oh, this guy's gonna be good or this guy's coming out of nowhere and hearing things and we just don't know because it's been four or five years since we've gone into a season with the same personnel the same coaching staff and the same system to go oh if this guy's really progressed he looked good last year in this same system you know and now you're adding this guy who you're seeing tape on somebody from that transferred from georgia or wherever else there's just so many Knowns again this year going in that I feel like the coach is talking about you know Gifford at safety and Bullock's a good one at linebacker. And I'm not I'm not saying it's not legit. I'm just saying that I don't know how much to take out of it or how much to put into it when you're hearing these guys' names that were on the team but haven't played much. Like did did something click and the system's finally right for them or are the coaches like oh shit this guy's actually pretty good. He's not this level like start level good or whatever. But so now they're talking about him and then all of us are getting gassed up thinking hey we've got a handful of studs that 
they didn't even get to play. The other coaching staff didn't realize, and now we're going to be stacked at these positions. So, and I'm not saying they're not good or they're not going to be studs or they're not going to transcend the defense or things like that. But it's just, you know, I don't get too excited about a lot of stuff like that anyways, but I'm, I'm super curious to see how he looks a handful of these guys look once they're taking meaningful reps. Yeah, this is no shot at John Bullock. It's just like, I feel like he has to be lacking something if they're talking about him this much, but he's not a starter. He's not a clear cut starter. Like there's gotta be something I'm thinking, is it speed? Is it burst? Probably not power. He got a single digit Jersey. Something's right. going on. Is it just leadership? That's kind of where the questions are that I'm talking about. Like, are they, the players vote on the single numbers. So I don't think they're giving a single Jersey number to a bum. No, not a bum, but how well are players recognizing who the absolute stud best players on the team are? Like they've said, single digit jerseys aren't just for starters, aren't necessarily even for the best players. It's voted on by the players, like on overall things. So let's say everybody loves the dude. He's a great leader. He works his ass off. He grinds out and does more than the average player does. And people are like, man, this dude deserves it. He busts his ass and does everything. But you're still behind Reimer. You know what I mean? Like, and I'm again, true. I didn't sit here and say that Reimer is going to be a first day draft pick, but the dude's a stud as far as our defense is concerned. So you're going to have to be super impressive if you're going to take a dude who's going into his senior year. He's been a starter since he's been there, essentially. I don't remember his freshman year exactly if, if he started his freshman year or came in later, but. You know how good you'd have to be getting moved from safety to middle linebacker and then you're putting a guy who's a three four year starter on the bench like that's that's not really fair to him you know if, you're, if we're judging him based on that but again you look if you're coming from safety to linebacker i don't know how set he is or how, how set the coaching staff is on strictly having him as a middle linebacker a lot of safeties who play outside linebackers are usually you know a lot of guys that go end up going to the league will be you know go from position to position and it's it's not a problem what side they're at especially you know how they do in, in tackling and run fits and things like that but anyways like there's just other questions like regarding that single digit number regarding if he's strictly going to be middle linebacker then i don't think that takes anything away from him that he's not putting primer on the bench so there's so much speculation these last couple of years it sucks because i mean it's exciting you know and there's a lot of hope and, and people are pretty optimistic but as far as trying to like analyze things and, and make pretty accurate predictions it's super tough because you just don't know you're going off hearsay and then assuming well if this was this this year and they're saying this then we piece that together this is what we're going to get we know better it doesn't always work out that way but that's just kind of human nature that's how you play it through in your mind and especially if you're optimistic you're always going to lean on the upside now obviously maverick noonan is out for the season unfortunately but that still leaves snodgrass and butler either of those two stand out to you more than the other the thing with butler is he put his name in for, to, to transfer out and then decided to withdraw it and stay and throughout you know the summer and going into this fall camp or whatever you've heard him like mention him talk about him and things that he's doing and you don't hear about like eric fields as much you hear a little bit about snodgrass and things like that but again a lot of them don't talk about players they're not asked about you know if rule will kind of like who stood out to you and he'll say a name and then it's almost like he goes oh shit, now i'm leaving these guys out so then he just rattles off a bunch of names so it's hard to go off of Again, if guys aren't really getting gassed up like Gifford and, and Bullock, for example, then I feel like people kind of tend to think like, well, I don't think he's doing much. You're not hearing much about him. But there's a lot of guys, like again, Reimer, I feel like I haven't heard a ton about him. And he took him with him to Big Ten Media Days. I don't know how much that has to do with being a senior. Obviously, he's a leader, a captain, things like that. I don't think anybody questions if he's going to be a starter and how much of a focal point of the defense he's going to be. So it's hard to just kind of play that game. But I'm more excited to see the coaching side. I'm more excited to see the scheme, what they base themselves out of, and then how frequent they rotate guys. You know, are they looking for hot hands during games? Is it strictly a mismatch they're looking for? Is it a snap count after so long they, they put another guy in? Are they doing swapping out the starting three for the twos? You know, all three twos. Are you are they doing it in rotation? So you've still got two of the starters out. Say Bullet comes in for Reimer, are you still leaving Henrik and Sherman out there assuming they're going to be the starters? Like those are the things I'm looking most forward to seeing. And then I think obviously you'll know more, but then you'll really see what you can get from the guys because they seem like they're going to do all of this very like strategically they're putting a guy in where they know he has the best chance to excel so again just like a wait and see but i'm i'm really anxious especially for the defense to see how they go about doing the rotations well tell us in the comments below is there anything you guys think we missed about the linebacker room that we need to be aware of thanks for hanging out we'll see you guys next time go big red